We recently suffered a huge loss to the saxophone and jazz community. Saxophonist and educator Tim Price had performed with Lou Tobacken, Shirley Scott, Tommy Dorsey, Bill Doggett, Rachel Z, and so many other people. But Tim also shared tons of jazz patterns and his own teachings on the web over the past couple of decades and in the Saxophone Journal. Now in this video, I wanted to share one of those 251 patterns with you, show you why it works and why it sounds so good. Here it is. Let's talk about that lick right now. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to bring your playing and improvisation to the next level. Now, if you want more tips like what I'm going to share with you today, hit that subscribe button, tap the bell, get notified when new videos are out. Tim calls this shape number one. It's essentially a pattern or a lick over the 2-5-1 chord progression. I'm going to be playing this in concert C. Let's listen to the lick. <laughs> Now let's look at it more closely to see why it works and why it sounds so good. All right, so here's Tim's lick. He calls it shape number one um, over the two, five, one chord progression, the most common chord progression, um, one of the most common chord progressions in jazz. So I did this in concert C. So the C major seven is the one chord, the D minor seven is the two chord and the G7 is the five seven. So here's what the D minor seven sounds like. Here's the G7. Here's the C7. That's better. Together, sounds like this. Okay, so the notes in a D minor seven, this is concert pitch, D, F, A, and C. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, we have the root right here on the downbeat. The third is on the upbeat. The E is on beat two. Now you may say, oh, but that's not a chord tone. It's okay, it's okay. I'm looking at the shape that he's doing here. If D is the one in this chord, one, three, two, one 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 three two one that's pretty cool um the e by the way is the ninth that's going to sound fine um over here on b3 the g the fourth is on the downbeat in a minor chord the fourth or the 11th right that's the extension um it sounds good okay it actually sounds really good and then we've got the E again here. And then on the fourth beat, we have a chord tone. In fact, this whole fourth beat, he's going up the D minor chord, starting on the third, the F. All right, now here's what's also going on here too. So this nice little shape, boop ba doo ba, one, three, two, one. In the next measure on the G7, same shape, except instead of down here, it's here. That's great. The reason, well, of course, it's Tim Price's lick. It's, it's, it's going to be great, okay? But it's great because the audience is going to catch that. They're going to catch on to that, and it's going to pro pro, um, provide coherence. Um, they can latch on to that. They can understand it, okay? So that same one, three, five, one, the shape is there. This is not one over here, though. This is actually the sixth or the 13th. Then it hits the one, then the you know, the flat seven and then the, the uh, 13th again, but it's the shape of this, okay? The intervals in between, that's what's repeated, okay? So I just wanted to show this first and why that, that will really sound good, but I wanted to bring out a couple of other things here too. I wanna show you something else that's going on in this first measure, which is really, really cool in case you haven't noticed it yet. So over here, Remember how I mentioned the G is not a chord tone, the E isn't either? Well, here's what's really going on. The goal is to get to this F over here. And so he's got an enclosure right here. The G is the upper neighbor to the F, the E is the lower neighbor. Okay, so it's going. That's the goal, the F right there. And this is just going up the chord. So shaped like this. 
now we have this. Sorry. All right, so even though there's some beats where he's not, you know, on um, the one, three, the five, or even the flat seven, it doesn't matter because he's implying, he's implying some of those notes here with this enclosure, and then he's hitting the chord tones over here. Okay, really, really cool. Now, what he's also doing, he's starting off in a lower register, and he's slowly building it up to not a high register, but a medium register over here, bringing it to the peak of the lick, the highest note over here, which happens to be the root of this G7 chord. And then he's slowly bringing it down back to the original range and doing the awesome voice leading of the seventh to the third. That's why this sounds really good. Another reason why it sounds really good, not the only reason. All right, now you're probably saying E flat, that's got to be a mistake, Donna. You messed up. No, I didn't. <laughs> he had this in his shape. Why? It adds a nice big spice, a big tension right there. Okay, so let's check out this G7 chord, right? G, B, D, and F. The E is the 13th. That sounds good. Let me bring this down here for a second. I'll go like here. Uh, let's see if I can get my hands over here. The E actually sounds fine. Some of you may not believe that, but it does. Okay. Um, the G is the root note right over here. F is the lowered seventh that fits the chord. E again. The E flat, it's the flat 13. All right. So what he's doing is he's adding tension there. And then he's immediately, he's not resolving down to the D. No, he's going to the B. The B is a strong chord tone because it's the third. And that's why this sounds good. He's introducing, he's got some light tension here by using 13ths, okay? But now adding the flat 13, there's a little bit of a chromaticism going on here. Um, he's adding a lot more tension. And he's also adding tension by not resolving to the D. Now, in your rhythm section, they're going to be hitting that note within the chord. So it's going to kind of be heard, um, but it's not in the line. So like right over here, that line, that line goes down in direction. And like I said before, it lands nicely on the seventh to the third. Okay, so that's what's going on here. It's... You know, it's not all around the same range. It is moving up. It's got its little bit of a peak. It's around the peak over here, tension, and it's it's releasing, not in the line so much, but going to a strong, strong chord tone and then resolving the seven to the third. And that's what Tim Price's shape number one is all about. And that's why it sounds really good. All right, now it's time to play it. I'm gonna play this at a slower speed so you can get this by ear. All right, so try to hear it a lot, sing it, and then try to figure it out on your instrument. Here it is again at the slower speed. How did you do? I'm curious, let me know, let me know in the comments below. All right, here's the lick again at, the, at a faster speed. Let's see if you could play along with this. Getting Tim's lick down in as many keys as possible will really help you build your jazz vocabulary. Now, we don't always play someone else's licks, especially when we're performing. So take this lick, definitely learn it in many keys, then figure out how to vary it. I'm gonna give you a few examples right here, right now, but before I do that, use these as examples for study. You're a different person than myself or Tim, and you want to create ideas that will resonate with you so they stick with you and so that you're going to sound authentically like you. And even if you only play blues, rock, or pop, you only play those genres, the more vocabulary you learn, 
the more you're building your technique so that you can create your own melodic solos. By the way, if you want more vocabulary in many styles and want to be really awesome and support my YouTube channel, check out my Patreon site where I have so many more video lessons featuring licks from Dexter Gordon, Chet Baker, Miles Davis, Candy Dulfer, and so many others. Plus, patrons get access to PDFs, backing tracks at various speeds. There's dozens of video lessons in there right now with licks and also stuff on performance anxiety and mindset. So just head on over to patreon.com slash Donna Schwartz music. Here's Tim's lick again with my own three variations. <laughs> All right, don't forget, let me know how you did with this lick in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me. On that note, take care. Have a great day.